What's going on guys? So, this video didn't start out quite like I'd hoped. I was really hoping to square away the suspension and um, yeah, I put together my reverse shocks and they're a little long still for what I need and come up with some ideas for some mounts and I don't have the pieces so that's going to get put on hold for a little bit. So I went ahead and moved forward with the engine. Um, this is the die-cast flat four from one of those fancy monthly subscription model kits. It's from a one-tenth scale military Jeep and it is a flat four which is fitting for this genre of hot rod but you know it's a Jeep engine but whatever. So we got it all decked out. I used the uh, modern Marvel's iron oxide paint activator on the block and generator and a couple key pieces and I use the AK rust streaks on a lot of the other things um, yeah so I painted the carburetor silver I left a couple things clean weathered some things because you know you get an old engine running probably gonna have to rebuild the carburetor so that's gonna be clean um, I didn't I forgot the weather the water pump it's like well water pumps get replaced and uh, yeah this kind of went from there the cap I left new it does have wires so again it's a flathead four-cylinder um, used a RC four-wheel drive scale V8 breather. Um, I didn't have anything. I, I had some ideas for some cool stuff to use, but I just had a bunch of those laying around because I've replaced the intakes on most of the ones that I've built. So, um, got the engine all back together. I, th that thing is, it's screwed together by tiny little Phillips head screws that don't even feel like they're, um, actual metal. It feels like they're made of clay. Every time you go to tighten it, either the head strips out or the, uh, you know, screw itself strips out. So I had a lot of extra ones and I was missing a lot, it seemed like. So we replaced some of that with some, uh, I believe, 1.5 mil RC four wheel drive hardware. Um, some of it worked, some of it didn't. Some of the holes on that block were self tapping, some of them were fine threads, some of them were different pitch threads. So it was a cluster trying to remember what went where after it took me a few days to get that rust paint to dry and start rusting. Um, I tried to pr spread that a little bit smoother this time and uh, it'll still keep rusting. We're just going to let it happen naturally on its own. Um, so that engine was a bit long. Uh, there's no way to put a scale motor inside of it though. And um, so I'm going to have to put some kind of transmission in the cab. So I went ahead and took the end of the transmission off. And it had a little plate that covered that, and that's what I put on the firewall. Thought it looked kind of cool, like a little access patch or something. Uh, made the firewall, just standard old sheet metal. Used some rare earth magnets, drilled out the holes that are on the Awesome Designs body. Popped them into place, and it holds that perfectly fine to it. That's how I've done all of my rat rods with a metal firewall. Um, I tried to play a little bit with patterns as far as sanding that. It, it, yeah, it didn't really work out, but we'll let it rust. I'm not going to do it right now because we're so early on in the build. But we got it all clearanced out to fit around the bell housing for the transmission. And the starter and the couple mounting points and stuff on the other side. So, um, one thing I put on here that I didn't really talk about. So we, I started on the back end. Didn't really have any the right stuff to make that work. But up here on the front end I made a nice little discovery. Not real mounted yet, but this is the servo mount from the RC four wheel drive Yoda truck, which was their Bruiser clone before we had Bruiser clones of Bruisers. Um, so it had a Delrin front servo mount, which was a vast improvement over the original Tamiya design. And uh, I just happened to have that piece laying around. I've got the chassis rails somewhere, but I think they've been cut over the years. But um, it fit between, you know, in the, in the C channel of my uh, half inch square tube frame. So, I sanded it down a little bit. It needs a little bit more trimming because right now the suspension arms, the radius arms, are hitting the rails. And uh, also, trying to screw it in from the sides on the frame rail, I'm going to have to do something to widen the front end a little bit. Now, what I found in the past with these radius arm front ends, they don't have to be perfectly straightened back. Sort of forward and rear. You can widen them out a little bit and somehow in the magical world of suspension geometry that will act as kind of a sway bar it stiffens the whole front end on the mounting points as opposed to just the axle itself 
and it really kind of improves the steering and handling characteristics of, of this so not too worried about that we can space out the back ones half a millimeter or one millimeter and should be able to give us enough room to put some screws in but I gotta I gotta sand it down a little bit more and figure out which way it's gonna face which size servo I'm gonna use fitting a standard servo in the grill is gonna be challenging to say the least but this is going to give us a place to do everything so we can mount our grill and it's at the perfect height fits level with the hood line and it gives us a place to put our actual servo so it's probably my best thought out steering system yet um, I know I mentioned this every rat rod build everybody wants to see a uh, cowl mounted steering arm and it's just not plausible with this setup the chassis I use the front axle is not wide enough so if I run an arm here it's going to be at an angle for one and the tie rod is going to go all the way and it's going to be touching the tire already so there won't be any of that it'll only be able to turn one way and barely another and short of widening the axles which I've done before and it can be done but it's going to throw off the whole entire proportions of the build and I'm just not having it so we're going to rock it like this because that's what works and uh, one of these days mark my words one of these days we will build a RC rat rod with a cowl mounted steering servo mechanism but the right body hasn't come along yet and the right tires and everything that would work with it just haven't found it so that's where that bedside just mocked up on again I haven't set all that in stone yet because I'm still working out the rear suspension um, the front suspension, I am pretty certain we're going to use the little Jalan 2 124 scale shocks. They're just going to fit nicely. Um, don't know if that they're really going to work very well. That one wouldn't even bounce back every time. So I definitely need to lube those up, but we're going to weld some mounts up there and, and it's just going to be s simple. Nothing extreme. And um, yeah, hopefully they can hold the weight of all this. Because again, we still have to do a servo battery motor speed control transmission there's a good side shot of that of the motor on this side now it burned my finger a little bit I was trying to use a torch to bend the exhaust around um, it was made to shoot straight down inside the frame rail and we don't need that so I've got it bent about right it burned it and kind of left a neat texture on it so we may not have to do much weathering um, I wanted to wait till I got the body mount finalized before we do the exhaust tip which I'm gonna do something I don't have a aluminum tube or anything large enough at the moment to fit over that but I'm gonna run it back here in front of the cowl and just have it dumped down the side maybe we can weather some exhaust fumes and something cool on it so uh, again no idea yet for body mounts um, the body has been previously cut it got damaged in shipping when I got it so there's a little bit more cut out in the on the back cab wall than I would prefer but we'll make it work um, the bed mounts, again, super easy, just needs a, a few more adjustments. That's the old vintage Tonka truck bed that we chop all to smithereens. And I'm probably just going to leave the bed size that color. It's cool, it's rusty, it's, you know, it's old vintage toy, so I'm going to rock that for now until we figure out what and how we're going to paint this thing. I do want to leave the grill rusty, I want to leave the headlights OD green. Uh, probably leave the wheels army green but they will need to be weathered a little bit. And yeah, I think that's it for this episode. Appreciate everybody watching. And thank you to my patrons, Patreons. There's a link below to that if you're interested. And uh, yeah, got shirts and stickers. Stickers are really nice shirts. Hit and miss, but you know. <laughs> Help support the channel. Thumbs up. Like the video. Share it if you're interested. And uh, keep it scale. I'll see you all in the next video.